Welcome to GOT Good Old Tech. Today we're going to talk about the OnePlus Open. It's now right on par with the Opal Find N5. There's an update that just came out and we're going to show you what you can do with it. Let's get to it. So as you all know, the OnePlus Open didn't get its predecessor. The OnePlus Open 2 did not come out. Instead, it came out with the Opal Find N5, which is the predecessor of the Opal Find N3. And the company seemed to be putting all their eggs in that basket for Oppo and hoping that the Oppo Find N5 would get as much traction as the OnePlus Open has globally. Unfortunately for us in the U.S. and other countries, most countries, we don't have access to the Oppo Find N unless we buy it through a third party and an additional cost. So with this update comes some features, some new features, one that I really like, the other one not so much, but we'll go with that here shortly. But one thing that I do like here is adjustable folders. So in other videos, I show you how you could do large folders and you can shrink them down or you can enlarge them just like so. And then now they've actually made it so you can actually resize them any size you want. Well, maybe not any size, but you can actually resize them, reshape them, however you want to do it. So that's pretty interesting. I like that to be able to do that. You can shape the folders, which is something that only the Opal Find N5 was able to do until now. And then there's that connection to your Mac that you could do with the Opal Find N. So let's get over to my computer and I'll show you what you can do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what you do after it's already installed. I'm gonna show you how you could connect your phone up to the computer and how it works. So there's an app here, it's called O Connect, and that O is from Oppo. And when you open it up, you can see here it opens up, it's already connect, shows my OnePlus open. Problem is it doesn't stay connected and Shane Craig had the same problem with his PC. It keeps wanting to disconnect, which is not a good thing. And then when you say connect here, if you look, it doesn't actually connect with the phone. It wants you to scan a barcode. Now, here I am sitting at my computer and I want to transfer stuff from my phone to computer. I've got to go through all these steps to do so when there's simpler ways to do it. But let's go ahead and play their game here. And there's two ways you could do it. You can either open up Chrome and hit the camera button there and scan it that way or... Since I've already got the program installed, I can go into settings here and I can go to connection and sharing. And then you look here is multi-screen connect. And you can see there it says Mark's Mac Mini and you just connect on it. And it should be connected, but you can see it's not. And even up here, all you have, the only options you have is delete. So it's ridiculous. There's no way to connect to it here, even though it shows it's there. So what you got to do is you got to connect this scanner here and you still have to scan it anyway. And then once you scan it, boom, it automatically connects. Now, for something like this to really work, it should automatically connect you would think anyway, once you open up the program, instead of making you go through all this. So it's crazy. But as you can see here, and I'll go ahead and go full screen with this, I've got everything on my phone listed here. I've got images, 465, uh, I've got videos here, my audio, documents, so you can get through, you can, you can see everything that's on your phone, basically. Now, what's interesting is I'm not seeing the opposite direction. And there's all kinds of options here on the phone where it says you can mirror. I've got everything turned on, content, sync, everything. I turned everything on. So you would think communication sharing, you think it would be great and just work, but something's just goofy about it. It doesn't do so well. They even show you here examples of how it should work, but it doesn't quite work as clean as you would think. So let me show you here. I got my camera on here and let's take a quick shot here of my microphone. There you go. I took a shot and watch it should appear. There it is. It says it's appeared. It gives you the option to tap to open, copy or whatever. Let's tap to open. Let's see what happens. Will it open the photo? Unfortunately, I have not been able to get it to open up any photos from this window. Um, and then if you want to transfer a file, let's say I want to transfer this file. Import files here, I guess. I'm not quite sure where I'm importing because see, these right here are my computer drives. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Let's open it up. This is this is my computer. And let's go ahead and um, 
open up a stock image and let's see if I can transfer. Here's Android 16. Let's see if I can open that and let's see if it's going to transfer. I've got my little spinner here. It's thinking. See how crazy this is? It's, it's so slow. I don't understand. And I, I'm not sure where it's supposed to go or if it's supposed to go. Now, in the meantime, what I can do here is I can actually open up my... Well, there it is. It finally showed up. What do you know? And it just opened up for me. Okay. So that's interesting. But that took a long time for a small file. Now the question is, is it saved on my phone? Let's open up my file manager. And let's see if that image is actually saved on my phone somewhere. Yeah, there it is. It's actually in my camera folder, I guess. Which is pretty interesting. So there it is. It just took an awful long time to get there. Now I'm going to actually show you a fast way to do this thing. I do it a lot faster with my local network. I have just a file manager here. I open it up and I can tap on my local network, go to my YouTube files, go to my stock images here. And it looks like the program just disconnected all on its own. I didn't disconnect it. So that's, it. So that's an issue just in itself. So right here is the file. I'm going to go ahead and select it, and I'm going to copy it to my internal storage. I'll just put it in my download folder, and I hit paste, and boom, it's there already. It's on my phone. That's so much faster than trying to do this weird connection thing that doesn't seem to want to stay connected. Well, there you have it. I'm sure the OnePlus Open got many more features with this update. If you haven't updated yours in a long time, you might want to go ahead and do that. One useful feature, of course, is adjusting the folder sizes. I think that's really cool. And then the other feature connecting to your PC or Mac, eh, maybe not so much. So I leave it to you if that's something you want to play with. I might play around with it a little longer, see if they improve it. But for now, it's a no-go. And with that, for those of you that have the OnePlus open, no need to upgrade to the Opal Find N. You're getting all the features in this that were supposed to be exclusive to the Opal Find N5. No longer. And on the OnePlus Open, you get it without compromise. You get better cameras as well. So tell me in the comments, what did you think? Are those features, do they look handy, either one of them? Or have you discovered any more? If you do have the OnePlus Open and downloaded the update, is your phone working any better? Did you notice anything special? Let me know now in the comments so I can take a look at that as well. If you want my first impressions of the Opal Find N5, check out this video here. Until next time, God bless.